Hi, it's Cindy here from the Osterville Library, and I'm here with Christine from Salty Broad Studios. And she's been going around the Cape uh, filming in, of, during this COVID-19 crisis all around the Cape. And she's captured quite a bit of um, different scenarios, and she's here to talk to us about this whole uh, photojournalism project she's working on. Hi. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for having me. This is, this is great to be able to share this project with... Uh with our community, which is what it's all about. <laughs> so what have you, like some of the pictures that you've taken so far around the Cape? Because you are a journalist and you do have the credentials to move around, which I want to make clear. Can you tell us some yes. of the things that you've captured? Yeah, so um, first off, I just want to kind of describe a little of my background. So I, I am a, a former staff photographer at the, I used to, my last job full time before starting my own business, uh, was working at the Worcester Telegram and Gazette and prior to that, I was a staff photographer at the Cape Cod Times. So actually a lot of people around here remember me uh, from when I would be telling their stories either at the library or, or you know, at a town meeting. So it's, it sucks, people still think I work there. <laughs> so I'm out and about and uh, you know, I'm, my business right now is Salty Bread Studios and I, I take photos at, um, for weddings and events and, and other businesses. And clearly all of that has come to a grinding halt um, right now. So the best thing I could think to do with my time uh, was to just go out there and take pictures as if I still uh, worked for a news outlet. And, and I am a freelancer. So uh, the idea would be that once this collection of pictures are is complete, um, that I would find a home for them, either they're in a magazine or a newspaper. But first and foremost, I, I like that I would like to see them be, you know, shared with our community and to offer up, we've, we've all been separate and we will, we will be separate uh, in, you know, social distancing for the next, you know, two to three months, it's looking like. So I think these photos have already showed us how willing we are to, to come to, even though we are sort of uh, told to be separate and, and confined to our homes, people are still going out of their way to uh, give out. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to show is this, this order that we need to stay away from each other, but this desire to still um, give to the community. So I've photographed a lot. And so bringing that all together is that once we are able to gather in public again, I wanna be able to show the collection of photos in a public way. Maybe Cindy can help me out with that. Maybe we'll do that in the library or maybe we'll do it at Cape Cod Beer. There's so many places, there's so many great uh, businesses and organizations on the Cape that I'm sure would be willing to, to host. That's not gonna be an issue. It's just a matter of when it's going to be safe. And I think it's going to be a really powerful moment for us to all come together and, and appreciate all the good things that have happened in spite of this really scary, stressful pandemic that has thrown us all for a loop. We're all in this moment of uncertainty together. And um, it's, it's created some really beautiful things. So just to give you an example, uh, and I will, you know, uh, provide a link and if you want to check out the project you can go to my Facebook public profile which is just my name Christine Hockepel H-O-C-H-K-E-P-P-E-L and if you search that on Facebook my profile pops right up and every day I'm posting new photos of what I find and I'm taking suggestions. So some of the things I photographed are uh, like um, Cape Camo, the, her, the owner of this Cape Camo apparel company uh, Lauren, she has unsold um, inventory. So she started making uh, surgical masks for different nursing facilities and healthcare workers out of her home. And, you know, I've, I've photographed um, an employee of the Marston Mills Library, Miss um, Audrey, who's a very popular person in Barnstable. And she has been reading to young people for faithfully every week. Uh, for 30 years <laughs> and she hasn't stopped. So she's still reading. She's taking videos every day of the stories that she reads. But I kicked it off with photographing um, the Barnstable Public Schools uh, food services director and his team. They knew that there were kids on free and reduced lunch that you know rely on the schools to get their meals every day. So they, he was kind enough to let me, um, you know, obviously from appropriate social distance photograph him and his team packaging up these meals. Uh, I guess this was not this Monday, but last Monday. And that was really how it began. So I just went there as if, you know, 
I was a journalist and he knew what the project was. It, it really wasn't anything at that point because it was my first, <laughs> my first stop on my journey. And I just photographed them doing the, doing the thing, like doing the assembly line, you know, passing the boxes of food and, and bringing them to the different um, stops. And then from there it grew. So those photos were, was the beginning. And then I showed the photos on Facebook and I asked my audience for suggestions. So what's happening out there? What, what kind of good things are, are coming out of this, this terrible crisis? And from there, I found out about um, the Barnstable the High School life sciences teacher, Liz, and here's a last name that I'm gonna butcher, Liz <laughs> Hencheruk, Hunteruk, who is also nine months pregnant. I don't know if you can tell from, I don't really think you can tell from the photos because she's wearing a, a, a coat, like a big coat, but she and her four-year-old were making like little seed kits because they're really passionate about about um, making monarch butterfly way stations. So <laughs> they just thought, why don't we create a, a educational activity for kids and families out there who are struggling with this suddenly being homeschooled and they get their fingers in some dirt and grow some, some flowers and, and, we, and things that attract monarch butterflies. And I guess I didn't even realize that they're endangered monarchs. So mm -hmm. she, uh, she, I learned a lot that day. <laughs> So it's, it's those little things. And then I'm starting to get into, now that the project has a little bit more visibility, I'm starting to get invited to, to a little bit more high profile things. Like yesterday I went to um, Joint Base Cape Cod and I was able to photograph uh, the, let's see, it's the Cape Cod Military Support Foundation has rallied all these volunteers to come out and they're trying to put together 50,000 boxes of uh, meals for veterans and their families and they're just shipping them out and with the help of job lot and home depot they're able to use these trucks to distribute these boxes that have i think two weeks worth of of food like three days three meals per day for a family of two and you know they're they're these people they're people are scared like they don't want to leave their homes they don't want to go they want to go to the grocery store and sometimes you delivery isn't an option where you are and and there's just a, an incredible response to the desire to help people get access to their basic necessities. Just this morning, I got up and I went to the senior center, uh, the Barstable, well, now it's called the Adult <laughs> Community Center, is that right? Um, um, and so they, the, the Barstable uh, Golf Department, all the people that work on the municipal golf courts in, in Barstable were there making this great big, you know, kind of, line of volunteers filling up boxes to give these material like uh you know pantry items to the seniors that need them that really shouldn't be going out and shopping right now so every day i i see something that really just kind of takes me home with a smile and I, I i literally can't wait to to get it up and show it everybody because it it brings me so much joy to be doing what i love most which is telling stories and being a journalist I actually had to order reporters notebooks on Amazon today for the first, I mean, normally I would get them in the newsroom, but like just that like small, like <laughs> thing, just that small, like, uh, you know, task of putting on my, my credentials and, you know, needing my reporters notebook. It, it's just been really fun. And it's, it's just great to be back out there and serving my community in this way. So it's super. Cause you know, I think the part like you too, you say where people are, you know, sheltering and not sheltering in place, but staying home and not being as mobile. It's nice to see all the things going around on the Cape that you wouldn't see or wouldn't really even know about because um, you don't hear about it in the news as much. I mean, um, no, they, I mean, frankly, they don't have the resources. To, I mean, they, they do cover these things, but they have other news to cover. They have to prioritize every day. Like uh, if that's, I'm trying to think of what I've been seeing in the near, in the Cape Cod Times recently, but you know the big story right now is about uh, the hotels. I guess you know not only only accepting, you know, healthcare workers that need to stay overnight or or something like that. So they have to focus on those those types of things, which maybe aren't necessarily the most heartwarming stories, but that's the news. That's yep, what that's you've got to you know. And so I have the ability to kind of choose. I mean, there's really not much of a, I'm not really uh, discriminating on anything. Pretty much whatever anybody asks me to do, I, I do my best to do it. I just don't want it to be too redundant, but I've already done like two different like mask 
photo opportunities and they're all a little bit different. Like everybody's doing it for somebody else. Like the other mask photo I did was of Charlene from Sposabella Bridal. She discovered that her, the gown, the bridal gown bags are the same material as the surgical wow. masks. So she's been dismantling all of her uh, bridal gown bags and wow. turning them into surgical masks. And she's figured out because she's such an experienced um, seamstress or, or uh, I don't know if that's the right term, but you know, so so <laughs> she's been able to uh, create uh, basically like a set of ten masks at once. She sews them all together, oh, and wow. then she just all just has to snip them apart. So it's just far more streamlined than hmm. sewing one at a time. So <laughs> it's just things like that 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 are really interesting, you know. And everybody's got a different reason for. So for people involved. can see all these on your Facebook page. Yeah, they can see them on my Facebook page, yeah. or I also created a gallery on my own website, which Sorry, is chachphoto.com, C-H-O-C-H. That's the first five initials of my first name and last name, and then photo.com. And then you'll see right at the top, there's the COVID-19 on, on, COVID on Cape Cod Gallery. Now, would you have any suggestions for people, like, say, at home, you know, where they're now, if they wanted to kind of, like, document their own little, you know, experience now, because hopefully this will be a once in a lifetime experience. And if somebody wanted to just do it respectfully within their family. Absolutely. Yeah, this is right up my alley. So um, if you need inspiration, uh, check out Annie Leibovitz's book, A Photographer's Life. Everybody knows who she is. She's a very well-known photographer. And uh, she started out by documenting her family and that's who you have the best access to. And frankly, that's what a lot of us are, you know, stuck with right now. We all, I mean, I'm happy for the extra time to be with my family and, and my wife and my, my dog and cats, but it's so important every day, not just in the moment of crisis to, to document these little things. And it doesn't really seem that essential until you know, a big event happens like this, or let's say the passing of a, a dear family member, and then suddenly we're all relying on these photos to help with the grieving process or to remember somebody. So I would challenge everybody to kind of like, you know, not be, not make that be your your impetus for taking pictures, but we are we are living in like a, a super historic moment in time right now. So I would say focus on um, an aspect of your life that is extraordinarily ordinary but has suddenly been changed because of COVID-19. So if you typically work in an office and suddenly you are now working at home and it's, you're taking over and your workspace is taking over like your living room or taking over your dining room, photograph that or have your, your kid photograph that and, and photograph it in a way that is not, that, that is thoughtful. Find a, a detail about that scene that is, that really gets at the what's happening here like find that that uh, aspect of the of the scene that really maybe it's frustration maybe it's uh it's an emotion or maybe it's even just a a snippet of a of a, of a newspaper article or something but whatever you know there's lots of it's, it takes a lot of uh uh care to, to notice the little details that tell a story and it takes a certain amount of nuance and in, into intuition but once you start paying attention to those little key little keys that you know kind of make the puzzle go together it's a really fun thing to look back on it and it will be treasured uh, by you know sure. your friends and your family generations to come so and, and I you know I would I would try to capture those candid moments truly I mean it's great to do a portrait on the porch front steps like that's what a lot of folks are doing right now but I think I would I would try to capture those small moments those quiet moments of your family uh, trying to get away from the screens or or how you're suddenly communicating by screen yeah. like maybe you're you're talking to your like for my family I have a large extended family you know my par my parents both have many brothers and sisters and my poor uh, grandmother right now, um, who's 87, she lives in a nursing home and no, she usually gets visitors a couple times a week, and, and, but she's blind and it's very important for her to be touched and talked to. And, and so now that's not something that we can do. So we've been taking turns, making sure to call her a couple times a day. But even for us, you know, the caretakers, we all feel that, that it's important to connect. So suddenly we're on a Zoom call with like 14 people and it's chaos, but 
<laughs> that's a photo. So I took photos of that because it's just hilarious. It's like Hollywood Square, my whole family. <laughs> and I'm sure we, we all have stories like that. And, uh, you know, just take this like bizarre, like, uh, you know, the, what's the unprecedented part of all of this, the, the new things that we're doing that are kind of getting us all back to being together is really fascinating to me. And I can't wait to see all your pictures too. I think we should all create a, sort of this like tapestry of how we survived this, this, this yeah, strange time. That's a great idea. And you know, you said your, your main business is a photography uh, studio, Salty Broad Studios. And I thought now here's your time to do, um, you're doing a special for when things get back together. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing to promote your business? Yes, so like a, weddings would be ramping up right now typically, but of course we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, rescheduling, postponing right now. But one of the things that really hasn't begun yet are, are the family, family photo shoots and business shoots or any kind of like our high school senior portrait. So one of the things I'm trying to do to drum up business for, my, for Salty Broad Studios is uh, if anybody wants to schedule a photo shoot, for 2020, but you're just a little bit timid about setting a date because we don't really know what's happening right now. <laughs> I totally understand that. So what I would like to offer to the community is if you want to book a session with me, uh, I'll take $100 off of the, um, the session fee price and we'll sign a contract. Uh, and then I will just put in that contract that you'll be able to book that shoot anytime in 2020. We'll make it work for you. And uh, you know, if for some reason, the pandemic doesn't allow the photos to happen. We'll we'll figure something out. We'll 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 do a refund or y'all, or we'll do it in 2021. But the goal is for you to get a good deal, and and to get photos in, in a in a way that you know works for all of our schedules. Given that we're kind of <laughs> stuck right now. You do great work because I've used you for headshots before. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, I love doing that too. That's and I'm thankful that I recent like literally. Five days before this all went down, I had a huge headshot day at the Chamber of Commerce. And if it hadn't been for that, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> that, that little bit of business that I got like right towards the end really helped me out. So I, I thank everyone for continuing to support this project, which isn't really necessarily part of the Salty Broad brand. It's more of like me, my name, Christine yeah. Hawkapple. But it's still obviously these all these all all these things go together. So why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time today to talk with us, and um, I'm sure people are going to be looking up your pictures and all that because, as I said, it really is a great way to stay connected with the rest of the Cape through these pictures of what's going on right now. So thank you, Christine, for taking this time with us, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Cindy. Stay safe. <laughs>